All right, guys, so today we're going to be continuing with content category 6A, Sense in the Environment. And we're going to have a really cool discussion on vision. And I've always found vision super interesting, particularly because it is the only sense to which an entire lobe of the brain, that being the, the occipital lobe, is dedicated. And so obviously vision is going to be very important for our sensory system and allow us to interact and relate with our environment. So following the outline here by the AAMC, uh, they want you to know the structure and function of the eye. So what the anatomy is and how it works. Okay, so let's just go over some anatomy here. And I drew up a picture of the eye, which uh, obviously not the best. You know, I don't profess to be Michelangelo here at all, but it should be good enough for, uh, for our needs. So first thing I want you to know is there's three distinct layers. Um, and the outermost layer, also known as the whites of the eye, is the sclera. Okay, and underneath that is the choroid which is, you know, has blood vessels in that. And then below that, we have the retina, which also has blood vessels in it. So we have the retina. And we'll talk more about the retina here in, in just a second and its importance. Okay, so let's just kind of go through the rest of this as a, a ray of light goes through uh, the eye. So first, we're going to have the ray of light hit the anterior one-sixth part of the eye, which is uh, actually continuous with a sclera, but it's transparent though, so we don't see it. Okay, what do you guys uh, remember from class that, that layer, that first layer that the light hits? Good, the cornea. Okay, and the cornea is actually pretty cool in that it has some refractive abilities in it, in that it's going to, as the light ray hits this, it's going to slightly bend in uh, that light ray and focus it more towards the back of the eye and the retina. Okay, so then as the light ray passes through the cornea, it's going to go through the anterior chamber. Okay, do you guys remember what the anterior chamber is filled with? Like a fluid of some sort? Yeah, it is, so the fluid is the aqueous humor. And the aqueous humor is going to be here in the anterior chamber as well as down here in the posterior chamber. So right down here, the posterior chamber. which is right behind the iris and right in front of the lens. And this aqueous humor basically gives nourishment to the lens and to the cornea. Okay. So now we're going to go through the very middle of the eye here. So after we go through the anterior chamber, what's the middle dark part of the eye called? Pupil. Good, the pupil. Which is regulated by this circular mus muscular tissue um, around it, which is known as the iris. The iris is really cool. So the iris actually is um, what regulates the size of the pupil. And it does this by two different kinds of muscles. So the first one being the dilator pupillae, and the second being the sphincter pupillae. And the dilator pupillae is going to do exactly what it says here. It's going to dilate the pupil. And that's possible because the muscle of the dilator pupillae is actually, it runs radially into the eye. So it kind of looks like bicycle spokes, if you see here in the, just a normal eye, around. And so when it uh, constricts, it's going to basically pull up. And just by doing that, it's going to enlarge the size of the pupil. Okay? And this would happen in, like I said, a very, a very dimly lit room. Um, and also, it's also a byproduct of processing very important or difficult information. Um, and then, and then the second muscle here, the sphincter pupillae, is um, different in that it, it's circular muscle. So it functions just like the sphincters in your GI tract, in that when it, um, when it you know, contracts, it's going to constrict. And just right here, when it, when it contracts, it's going to constrict the pupil and thus constrict the amount of eye, that's, eye that enters into the eye. So that's the sphincter pupillae. And those two things are going to, like I said, those two parts of the iris are going to uh, allow the pupil to either dilate or constrict. And also, just uh, to note here, the iris is continuous with the, the choroid. So the second layer here in red is continuous all throughout. And, um, and the, so the, the choroid, uh, the iris is also continuous here with the ciliary body. 
which is just this area right here, which is also composed of ciliary muscles. And in a very cool feature called accommodation, uh, the ciliary muscle will pull on these suspensory ligaments. So let me write that up. Suspensory ligaments, which will then uh, basically elongate or widen uh, the lens here and allow us to, again, just focus the, the image on, on the back of the eye in the retina. Um, okay, so mentioned here, so we got the lens. Um, forget that, it's obviously a very important part of, the, uh, part of the eye here. And because that is what allows us to focus that image on the retina. And right here in the macula, uh, macula lutei, can't spell here. And right here in the middle of the macula lutei is known as the fovea or the fovea centralis. Sweet. Um, and this lens, what, what kind of lens is this in, in, in our eye? Convex or concave? Convex. Good, convex. Convex, right? So it's going to be, it's going to be converging. Right, because if it was a concave uh, lens, which you know we'll talk about more in the physics session, you know light ray comes in, it's going to cause that light to diverge, uh, which obviously we won't, wouldn't want to do because then we can never focus the image on the macula lutea. So um, you know, so you, you might see some application problems on the MCAT integrating some physics, you know, into the anatomy of the eye, specific with the lens. Um, you know, we'll go, we'll go more through lenses and mirrors in the physics section of, of, of our reviews, but um, just keep that in mind that you might see some, some sort of integration with that. Okay, so, it goes through, so the light ray goes through the lens, and then it's going to go through this uh, chamber, which is known as the vitreous chamber. And what do you guys think the vitreous chamber is going to be filled with? Exactly, vitreous humor. Sweet. Um, and then right here is the optic nerve, made up of those optic fibers, which we'll also talk about more about here in the retina. So I want to get through this far and um, just kind of follow, you know, as a ray of light goes through the eye, just kind of follow how, you know, it goes through the anatomy, how the anatomy works, how they all integrate with each other, and make sure we're all good up until that point. Um, any questions so far on, on what we've gone through? Awesome.